One day, Gordon and Stephanie were at Brenham Docks, having cargo loaded and unloaded. But Cranky and Carly were working rather slowly. It was hard for them to focus on their work. There was a lot going on right now. Sodor was in danger once again. I thought Boulder taking over the super station was the biggest threat slash problem we ever would have to deal with, said Gordon. But now we have three threats targeting us from different places. Yeah, I know, it's 70. It's quite scary. Don't worry, said Bolstrode. We were able to defeat Boulder's army, which I think had a little over a hundred members in it. So yeah, if we were able to defeat Boulder and his army, then surely we can defeat all three of these threats that are currently targeting us. Bolstrode is right, said Harry. As long as we stand together, we can overcome any obstacle or threat that we come across or have to deal with. The engines agreed, but they were still worried about what the future held for them. On the other side of the island, not far from Crovin's Gate, Thomas was helping Todd with an important project. Todd was helping to modify signals to include security cameras in order to let everyone know if there were villains lurking around. All the security cameras that were placed around the kingdom were fed back to one location, which was the shed that Todd was in in the siding off the main line. Okay, Todd, can your security camera see me? asked Thomas. Yes, said Todd, but you're not close enough to it to trigger the alarm. Wait, there are alarms on these security cameras, said Thomas. Yes, said Todd, I will program the cameras to only sound the alarm when they see a villain. But for now, this is just a test to make sure the cameras will work well. So I need you to get a little closer to the signal to set off the alarm. So Thomas moved a little closer. When he got close enough, villain alert, villain alert, villain alert. Ah, perfect, said Todd. It works well. So like I said, I will program the cameras to only sound the alarm when a real villain is spotted. So like Albert or one of his coaches, Freedom or one of her trucks, or one of the trucks of the worst organization, you know. Before Thomas could answer, the two saw Jonathan the ballast spreader rushing around the bend. He was going so fast that some of his ballast flew from his trucks. Easy there, Jonathan, said Todd. You almost flew off the bend. What's your rush? You don't usually go this fast. Sorry, said Jonathan, but am I glad to see you guys? There was trouble happening at the steamworks when I was laying ballast on the tracks over there. What kind of trouble? asked Todd. Well, said Jonathan, I saw Albert and some of his coaches capturing Victor and Kevin. Victor and Kevin? gasped Thomas. Just then, another engine came down the line. I'm slowing down, I'm slowing down, oh no, oh! Rebecca accidentally smashed into Jonathan's cars and pushed them off the rails and onto Thomas's line. Whoa, Rebecca, cried Thomas, what's going on? Sorry, Jonathan, about your car, said Rebecca, but there's bad news. I saw some of Albert's coaches. Yes, I know, said Jonathan, they captured Victor and Kevin. That's not what I was going to say, said Rebecca. Oh, it wasn't? Oh, I'm sorry. What did you see? I saw two of Albert's coaches capturing Den and Dart at the Diesel Works, said Rebecca. Den and Dart, cried Thomas. Oh, this is bad. Victor and Kevin helped repair steam engines at the Steamworks, and Den and Dart repaired diesels at the Diesel Works. 
without any of them around, there's not going to be anyone to help repair our engines if we have accidents. What are we going to do, said Rebecca. I imagine they're probably taking them to the Furnace Kingdom to hold them prisoner, just like Ricky and Roxanne, said Jonathan. I suppose we'll have to send a rescue party to rescue them later, but for now, what are we going to do in case someone needs repairs? Todd thought for a moment, then he had a great idea. Don't you worry, he said. You leave the repair stuff to me. Okay, what are you going to do, asked Rebecca. You'll see, said Todd. Elsewhere, Albert and his coaches were taking their prisoners to an old shed, which wasn't in the Furnace Kingdom, but actually the Mainland Kingdom. So, uh, Albert, said Old Slowcoach, remind me again why we're putting them in this shed and not somewhere in the Furnace Kingdom. Because, old slow coach, said Albert, the Sodor engines know that we took these guys, so they're obviously going to think that we're taking them to the Furnace Kingdom, but if we hide them here, then they won't find them when they come to the Furnace Kingdom to rescue them. Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. Wouldn't you agree, Henrietta? But how do we know no one here in the Mainland Kingdom is going to find these guys, asked Victoria. Because, said Albert, this shed is old and useless. It's about to fall apart any minute now. No one sleeps in a shed like this. No one will come here. No one will find them. Okay, if, if you're not sure, I'm positive. Now come on, let's go. We've got much more to do. Oh dear, now what? What he means is, what are we going to do now? Me and Dan have no fuel. You guys are stuck on flatbeds. What are we going to do? How are we going to get out of this? I do not know. Wait, someone's coming. Alright, time for a nice rest in my favorite shed. Huh? What was that? Cody, the mountain engine, was helping to keep lookout for bad guys from up in the mountains. Cody looked into the distance. He could see Silver pulling a goods train. Then he saw Splinter taking empty flatbeds and supplies to the lumber yard. No bad guys around here, said Cody. But Cody didn't know that there were bad guys closer than he thought. They were just underground. Alright, is everybody ready? Yes, we're ready. We've been ready for like five to ten minutes now. Let's get this over with. We got things to do. Alright, if you know as much about magnets as I do, you know that some ends of magnets stick to each other and the other ends push each other back. Well, I've made special magnetic buffers that will push whoever is wearing them away from the other. So this will come in handy for if we're fighting. If someone's trying to attack us, our magnetic buffers will push them away. And here to demonstrate the magnetic buffers, we have Cricket and Beth. Go ahead you two, charge towards each other and show everyone how wonderful the buffers work. Are you sure I should be doing this? I was just repaired last night and that earlier test we did kind of got me a little bit damaged and I do not want to have to be repaired. Do it! Alright, alright. Here goes. Here I come, Beth. Whoa! Ow. Ow. Ah, <laughs> success. So what do you guys think? What do we think? Hmm, that's a good question. Seems like the person 
wearing those buffers gets pushed back just as hard and far as the attacker. So that's probably not what we want. Yeah, so therefore I think this idea is stupid. What did you just say? I said it's stupid. Ow, I am hurting. Me too, I am wounded. Time, please come help me. All right, all right, I'm coming. Man, it's a good thing we've got time in our gang. He sure knows how to fix us broken trucks. Yeah, you know what they say, time heals all wounds. <laughs> oh. Guys, have you... I won't even ask. Oh, Director Mickey, Director Mark, and Director enough of that. Have any of you guys seen Ake, Wado, and Shorty? We haven't seen them for at least a few days now. I haven't seen them for a few days, too. Same here. None of us have seen them recently. Nope, not I. Haven't seen them. Sorry. I haven't seen them since I zapped them with that searchlight card Miranda was working on the other day. Wait, what did you do? I zapped them with that yellow and blue searchlight card. They were being mean to me. Eduardo called me stupid. And I hate it when people call me that. You used my searchlight card. The one that erases a month's worth of the target's memory on two trucks that have been working for worst for at least a month now? Duh, that ain't smart. You miserable little stupid bonehead. Erasing a month's worth of memory from two trucks who joined Wars about a month ago is the stupidest thing anyone could do. Do you not realize how important Eduardo and Shorty are to this gang? They are some of the most helpful, the smartest, and most sneakiest and strongest trucks there are from this gang. And if they've had a month's worth of memory erased, then they probably don't know about our gang and are probably going to try to do something nice for the others. We have half a mind to fire you, but when we say fire, you know of course that we don't mean you lose your job here at worst. No, no, we of course mean that I know what you mean, but we're saying it anyway. Uh, say what exactly? When you get fired here at worst, you don't lose your position as a gang member. Instead, we kill you. That's what happened to Bossy, Zoe, Jesse, Ralph, Nathan, Komodo, those two silly vans. And Seth and Green Eyes, yeah, all those trucks I just mentioned used to be in worse, but they were pretty big failures. And so, well, therefore, these guys had to kill them. Seth and Green Eyes, huh, that's almost like Beth and Blue Eyes. Yeah, they kind of sound like very interesting. Shut up. We're going to have to send you and some other trucks to find Eduardo and Shorty. We better hope that they haven't done anything nice for anyone else. And if we find out that they have, you're finished. Time, get over here. Oh, okay, yeah, sure thing, Mickey. So, what do you need me to do? And so since the fossil box car erased their memories, 
at least a month's worth, they may not remember or know about worst. If we can find them, we may be able to stop them before they do join, and maybe we can try to find out why they and the rest of their gang joined worst. Yeah, we might be able to, but we have to do it fast because they're sending some of the trucks out to find them. Then we better find them first. Leave it to the steam engine, Stafford. And the diesel engines. Leave it to the steam engines and the diesel engines. It's like they don't think they can do anything. I can do just about everything that they can do. Once my battery's been charged at least. And with that, Stafford began recharging his battery. Meanwhile, Charlie was pulling a goods train. And he stopped to collect some bricks at a crane that stood by the road and the tracks. As the crane began lifting up the bricks and loading them into Charlie's train, Isabella rolled up with some of her own cargo. Hey Charlie, she said. You doing alright? I'm doing okay, said Charlie. Isabella could see Boxer at the end of Charlie's train. How are you doing, Boxer? she called. Fine, Boxer called back. Well, Charlie, I normally wouldn't ask you to do this, but could you tell me one of your jokes? I could use something to kind of cheer me up. You know, with everything that's going on right now, it's kind of hard to stay positive. I suppose I could tell you a joke, Charlie. Let me see here. Um. Okay, I got one. What kind of... Whoa, what the... What? What happened? Asked Isabella. My train just went backwards all of a sudden. You're not playing any tricks, are you, truck? No, I'm not. Okay, well, I don't know what happened. Anyways, um, as I was saying, what kind of brake van has big antlers? Hmm, I don't know. What? A camoose. Charlie and Isabella started laughing at the joke, but they were so busy laughing that they didn't notice Boxer was being dragged away by coaches. Guys, guys! Meanwhile, Todd was showing off his latest creation. Alright, said so Todd. As you guys may know, Victor and Kevin, along with Den and Dart, have been captured by Albert and his coaches. We will rescue them, but in the meantime, I have something that will help out in case anyone gets damaged. And what would that be? asked Slimy. Well, said Todd, I've made some magical repairing water. So basically, if anything gets soaked with this water, if it's broken or damaged, then it will automatically fix itself. The water will do that. So, to test it out, Rebecca here accidentally crashed into Jonathan and so her buffers are a bit bent. So Rebecca is going to pull up a little and then the water is going to spray onto her buffers. And just like that, the water soaked Rebecca's bent buffers and they suddenly repaired themselves. Oh wow, that's really cool, said Crimson. It is really cool, said Todd. And you and Fiona have the honor of carrying this special repairing water. We do, said Fiona. Oh, thank you, Todd. Now we get to help out, like, in a big way. Scaredy and Slimy smiled. No one knew, however, that some evil trucks were lurking nearby. So, that nerdy scientist Todd has made some magical repairing water, eh? We shouldn't let those heroes get the water. We should take those two little tankers once they've been filled with the water and then make off with them. We can take them to the Furnace Kingdom. First we gotta wait till the others leave. Then we'll go up and take them, said One-Eyed David. And they quickly hid in the tunnel. 
All right, you two, said Todd. Let's get you filled up. Scaredy and Slimy rolled away to get some more work done. And so did Rebecca. Bye, Todd. Thanks for making this special water. My buffers feel much better. Todd smiled and then hurried away to get some mulch delivered. Alright, now it's our chance. Let's go. Crimson and Fiona were just finishing up their water filling and suddenly, whoa, hey, you're coming with us, kids. Ah! One eyed David and his gang pushed Crimson and Fiona down the track as fast as they could. But as they approached the junction, they saw Gordon coming the other way. Look out! cried Brutal Bonnie. The truck swerved into a shining just in time. But they couldn't brake fast enough and they rammed Crimson and Fiona into the buffers and they fell off the track. They tumbled down the hill and they landed in a boat that was passing by. Oh, they're getting away from us, cried One-Eyed David. Well, that is just... One of the trucks could see a sign on the boat. It said, This load is heading to India. They're heading to India, said the truck. Hmm, said Brutal Bonnie. Should we try to go after them or just leave them? Well... As long as the repair water is going away from the heroes, I guess that's what's really important. You know, you're right. Of course I'm right. Aren't I always? No. The truck started arguing as they left the siding and rolled away down the line. Gordon had stopped and heard everything, and he rushed off to warn the others. So, those tankers that those trucks just lost were carrying some magical repairing water, huh? We could use that water. We better tell Freedom about this. It wasn't long before Gordon saw Scaredy and Tara. Hey Gordon, have you seen Crimson and Fiona? asked Scaredy. They weren't at the water towers when I came back. I did see them just a short while ago, said Gordon. They were being pushed by a few bad trucks. Bad trucks? Which ones? Um, I think the one behind the two tankers had an eye patch. That's One-Eyed David, said Scaredy. One-Eyed David took the kids, asked Tara. Well, they were taking them, but they had to run onto a siding to avoid crashing into me. And they accidentally knocked the two tankers off the track and they fell onto a boat that's heading for India. India, said Scaredy. Yes, said Gordon. They didn't seem to really want to go after them. But I'm sure someone else will. You guys better get a move on and find a ship to India so you can get them back. Then that's what we'll do. Come on, Mom, said Scaredy. And the two tankers rushed away. So Scaredy and Tar went to Brenham Docks and boarded Stefano. And Stefano quickly set off for India. Tiffany went with them so she could help look for the two tankers when they got there. Meanwhile, at a level crossing, Nelson and Madge were getting ready to pass over it. Just then, around the corner came Vinny. Oh, hello Vinny, said Nelson. Haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, I went back to the mainland kingdom sometime before your little superstation showdown. 
But I'm back now because, well, I found these guys in one of the sheds of the mainland kingdom. And I didn't know what they were doing there. So I'm bringing them back to Sodor. Okay, well, thank you, Sinosin. Nelson was beginning to go over the crossing, but then there was trouble. From behind Vinny, three coaches came down the line and bumped into him. Vinny felt a big bump and he was pushed forward and broke through the crossing gate to knock Nelson over. And he sped into a signing and broke through the buffers. Ah! He cried as he slid off the tracks. The coaches then raced through the junction. They bumped the back of the train slightly and knocked Kevin over. And they raced away out of sight, dragging Boxer with them. Just then, Thomas came down the track with a coal train. Sinners and ashes, he cried, and he swerved onto a siding to avoid hitting Kevin. And he slid off the end of the siding and crashed into Match's flatbed, which had Duncan on it. Oh, come on, said Duncan. Not another accident. I already just came off a broken piece of track and slid into a pond and got my firebox wet. Now Thomas has to come off the line, knock me off the flatbed and get me covered in coal dust? Sorry, Duncan, said Thomas. What happened here? I could see the accident happen from where we were, said one of the trucks. It looked like a runaway train came and hit Vinny and pushed him through the crossing. That was not a runaway train, said Fred. I saw the train hit Vinny and then it raced off after he crashed. A runaway train doesn't stop and then race off again. That was some kind of rolling stock and it looked like they had Boxer with them. It was some of Albert's coaches, said Harry. You mean Boxer has been captured by coaches, said Kevin. Oh, this isn't good, said Victor. Why would coaches want us to take Boxer, said Dan. I don't know, but someone has to save him, said Dart. Just then, Patrick, the cement mixer, rolled up to the crossing. Oh my G-O-S-H, what happened here, he asked. Don't worry about us, said Nelson. You need to find the nearest engine and tell them that Boxer has been captured by coaches. Alright, I'll find the closest engine, said Patrick, and he hurried away. The closest engine was Stafford. He had just finished shunting a goods train for Hank. Hello, Patrick, said Stafford. What are you doing here? Boxer has been captured by coaches, said Patrick. Someone needs to go to the Furnace Kingdom and rescue him. All right, I'll recharge my battery real quickly and then head that way. Actually, why don't you let us do it, said Chloe. Yeah, mate, said Joey. We may have a pretty clever plan on how to get ourselves in there and rescue our Uncle Boxer. Yeah, leave this to us, said Zoe. And the three male coaches rolled away, leaving Stafford rather annoyed. All the steam engines, diesel engines, and trucks think that I can't do anything useful, he said. Nonsense, said Patrick. You're a very useful shunter. I want to do more than just shun trucks. I want to help save the day. Well, I'm sure you'll get your chance to sooner or later, said Patrick. I hope so, said Stafford. And he rolled away. Hank arrived to collect his train and puffed away with it. After Hank delivered his goods train to the docks, he began taking another goods train to Vickerstown. Not too far down the line, Stafford was taking a cargo cart to the yard. But he soon realized he was on the wrong track and began to reverse back to the junction. Just then he saw something. Out of a tunnel came Cricket. Stafford. 
Stafford realized he had a chance and rushed towards him. Cricket couldn't hear Stafford coming because of his electric battery, and Stafford rammed into Cricket with the cargo car, and Cricket went right onto it. What in the world, said Cricket. Stafford then stopped and placed the cargo car on the crossing. All right, Cricket, said Stafford. I want to know why you and your gang joined the wars. You were helpful trucks at first, and you were our friends. Why did you suddenly join them? I know you weren't there from the beginning. I heard that you've only joined them and been with them for a month. I won't talk, said Cricket. But just then, the two of them heard Hank's whistle over the hill. Hank saw Cricket on the crossing and applied his brakes, but the momentum of his heavy train pushed him down the hill. I'll never stop in time, he cried. Cricket screamed. All right, all right, I'll talk, he said, and just like that, Stafford pushed him off the crossing just in time. Whoa, that was close. Thank you, Stafford, called Hank as he disappeared down the track. All right, said Stafford, start talking. We may have to go somewhere else first, so no one in there hears me telling you, said Cricket. So Stafford took Cricket somewhere else. Meanwhile, Crimson and Fiona had arrived in India. They had been unloaded from the ship and were now rolling around the harbor. They honestly had no idea what to do. They knew they had to find a ship that could take them back to Sodor, but the harbor was very busy and they were a little too nervous to ask any engines for help. They were hoping they could maybe find a truck or someone who could help them. The engine seemed way too busy to help them out. At last, the kids spotted a tanker coming their way. Maybe that tanker over there can help us, said Crimson, and he and his sister rolled up to the double crossover track. Um, excuse us, said Fiona. The tanker stopped and looked at the two milk tankers. Can you help us? What's the matter? Well, we accidentally got onto a ship that was heading here, and now we're trying to find a ship that can take us back to Sodor. Why would you want to go to Sodor? Because that's where we're from. Why do you need to get back there so badly? Because we have some important cargo. What kind of cargo? Well, it's... It may sound a little crazy, but it's this little magical repairing water that our friend Todd made and... Ah, so you're the two tankers Mickey told me about. Bother them, girls. And Crimson and Fiona were taken away by the friends of Gorgeous Green. Unknown to Gorgeous Green, Tiffany had flown ahead and was watching her friends take away Crimson and Fiona. I gotta tell this to Scary and Tara, she said as she flew away. A few minutes later, Scary and his mother arrived at the harbor. Tiffany flew in and informed them on what had happened. Crimson and Fiona were taken away by Gorgeous Green and some of her friends, said Tiffany. Gorgeous Green? You mean that tanker that you said was on the good side and the bad side? Yes, it looks like she's on the bad side. Cause I think I heard her mention Mickey's name. Mickey, as in one of the leaders of wars? Yes, I'm afraid that's what she said. We gotta find the kids before something bad happens to them. 
just then a tank engine puffed up. Oh, excuse me, she said, but could you back up a bit? I need to shunt my trucks into that siding right there. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, said Scaredy. Have you seen any black female tankers pushing two little milk tankers? I did actually. Well, did you see where they went? We need to find those milk tankers. They're my kids and they're carrying some important cargo that we need back on Sodor. Really? Well, okay. Well, I saw them being taken to a quarry. A quarry? Can you take us there? I suppose, but what's the magic word? Please? Okay then, follow me. My name's Ashima, by the way. Gorgeous Green and her friends had taken Crimson and Fiona to the quarry and imprisoned them there. As soon as her friends rolled away down the line, Gideon and Jesse pulled up. Hey, you, said Gideon. Have you seen two little milk tankers named Crimson and Fiona? Actually, you have seen them. Where are they? Why should I tell you? You better tell us, or else. Or else what? You know what or else means. It means we'll kill you. Uh, sure thing. Right this way. Ashima led Scaredy and Tara down the line towards the quarry. Now in this quarry, said Ashima, engines or trucks will usually be competing in a challenge in order to get something they might want. So in this case, one of you will have to compete in a challenge to get the kids back. Here we are. Shankar and Rachi are getting things ready right now. Thank you, Ashima. Yes, thank you. Okay, here we are. Thank you. Now get her out of here, boys. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Stop! Relax, we're not gonna hurt you. We're just getting you out of our sights. What's she doing here? Probably came for the kids, no doubt. Hello, Scaredy. Long time no see. Personally, I don't think it was long enough. Alright, Ashima. The game is ready to play. Indeed it is. The game is quite simple. The players must try to push their cargo cars off the track and hit that great button right there. If they are successful in hitting it, the boulder will come down and knock down the bridge, the water tower, and the house. Huh, <laughs> piece of cake. Not so fast. The players can only start from right there at the black and yellow hazard stripes. They have that much distance to give their car a good enough bump to send it off the track and into the button. You cannot back any further. You, your wheels must be at the edge of the line. Why don't you do this, Mom? You sure you don't want to do it? You got this. I guess I do. Tara and Freedom moved into position. Scaredy watched from down below. Try not to hit us by mistake, said Fiona. Oh, don't worry, said Tara. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to hit you if you're there. 
I'll do my best to hit you by accident, said Freedom. <sighs> ladies first. They're both ladies, Raji. Oh, right. <laughs> Is that all you got? Alright, move those trucks back into position and try again. I think you're losing it. All that time away from your family has made you lose your touch, as well as your strength. Alright, Tara, you can go first this time. Come on, Mom, you can do this. Yeah, you can do this, alright. You can lose and say goodbye to your family as soon as you came back to them. Yeah. Tara gave her cargo car an extra hard shot. It rolled into the switch and knocked down the boulder. Ha! I did it! I should have known better. Alright, nice work, Mom. Well done, Tara. Rachi. Please go and get the kids down from there. Sure thing, Ashima. Alright, we're just gonna... Alrighty, and we're just gonna pull this on the tracks. Alright kids, you can... Hop down from there and land on this cargo car. Wow, Mom, I can't believe you actually did it. Wait till I tell this to Dad, Raven, and Black Lick Wish. I don't know what came over me. Well, clearly you were being angered by Freedom's insults. And so, basically, the anger fueled your strength and you were able to make the shot. <laughs> I may not be an expert at pushing cargo cars, but when it comes to bowling for tankers, I'm a pro! What a- ow! Oh! You asked for it now. Scaredy, you protect the kids. I'll do with freedom. You got it, Mom. Ashima, Scaredy, and Crimson and Fiona quickly move to a safe distance. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Oh boy, now's my chance. Ah, whoa. Whoa. Take this. Ah. Oh, incoming. Whoa, get clear. Oh boy, here she comes. Ah. Whoa. That was a close one, said Ashima. Can you two please release me? Sure. Here. Whoa! Oh no. Oh! Get those kids, Jesse. They've got nowhere else to go. The track's blocked by the pedestrian bridge and you're blocking the only exit. You got it. Oh no you don't. What what ah Hey Why I oughta coming through No 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 oh Go you two said Ashima Push the trucks aside and go down that emergency exit track 
Crimson and Fiona didn't want to leave Scaredy and Tara behind, but they knew they'd better go while they still had the chance. Haha, <laughs> nice one, Shankar, said Scaredy. Yeah, said Tara, you made freedom knock the whole pedestrian bridge down. What about me, said Rachi. I helped too. Yes, thank you, Rachi, said Scaredy. Now let's get out of here while we've got the chance, said Tara. Shankar backed up to allow Tara to access the points. Go down that track, he said. It's an exit that will take you to the harbor. And Skitty and Tara hurried away. Those two tankers sure have a lot of stuff, said Shankari. Huh? Is something going on behind? Ah! Freedom shoved Shankar down the line and he smashed into Rachi. Ow! They cried. <sighs> Take that. Your turn. No! You go that way. I'll see where this way goes. Stefano was waiting at the harbor for Scaredy and Tara. Crimson and Fiona had already arrived and were loaded. Scaredy and Tara quickly arrived and hurried underneath Stefano's deck. Stefano closed up his door and off they went. You've won this battle, but I will win the war. Stafford, meanwhile, had brought Cricket to a private area where he could tell him why Eguardo's gang had turned evil. All right, start talking boxcars at Stafford. Well, said Cricket, it all started a little over a month ago. Henry was pulling a heavy goods train towards his forest. He was going over a bridge, and the heavy train began to push him down the line. But there was trouble up ahead. Some old trees by the line were being blown by the strong winds, and they fell over and landed on the tracks. Henry saw the trees and braked hard, but the momentum of his heavy train pushed him into the trees and he came off the rails. And he slid off the tracks and came to a stop in a field several feet away. Sparks from Henry's brakes flew from his wheels and landed on the fallen trees, and they quickly began to catch fire. Oh no, cried Henry, fire! Help! Somebody help me! The news quickly reached the search and rescue center. Flynn and the fire trucks were ready to go, but Bell needed to fill up on coal. You go ahead, Flynn, said Bell. I'll join you once I've filled up on coal. And Flynn and the fire trucks quickly left. Flynn quickly drove off the tracks and took the road to the forest. As Flynn and the fire trucks approached the forest, there was a level crossing in front of them that they would have to go over. Unfortunately, no one knew that the crossing gates were stuck and that they wouldn't move. Flynn soon approached. He saw the gates, but didn't worry. They'll open, they'll open, he said. But they didn't. The other fire trucks couldn't stop and they crashed down to the crossing as well. And soon all three fire trucks were stuck in a pile. Oh, botheration, said Flynn. The level crossing was blocked and the fire was spreading and trees were starting to come down. 
luckily, there was a subway tunnel nearby. Eduardo and Shorty came out and saw what was going on. They knew they had to help. Luckily, they knew that there was a hose car and a water tanker down the other line. So they quickly went to get them. The two of them soon returned with the hose car and water tanker. And they began to fight the fire. Bell soon arrived with the breakdown crane to free Flynn and the fire trucks from the crossing. She was so focused on this that she didn't see Eduardo and Shorty fighting the fire. Once Flynn and the fire trucks were out of the pileup, they quickly hurried over to fight the remaining flames. And soon the fire was out. Everyone was relieved. But Henry was upset that a lot of his favorite trees had burned down. After the fire was put out, Proteus and Lady arrived to thank the team. Great job, Bell and Flynn, said Proteus. You put out the fire before it could burn down the entire forest. It was our pleasure, said Flynn. That's what we're built to do, fight fires and save the day. Eduardo and Shorty were waiting, but nobody gave any thanks to them. This made them upset. They had been fighting the fire first while Flynn was stuck on the cross and waiting to be rescued. Henry would have spoken up, but he was too upset by the trees that had been destroyed in the fire. After waiting another minute or two and getting no thanks or credit, Eduardo and Shorty finally stormed off. They told the rest of us what had happened, and we decided that if we weren't going to get the credit we deserved, then we wouldn't help the heroes anymore, but rather try to destroy them. Stafford was very cross. Well, what can we do? To make you stop being bad. Well, it's a cricket. I would guess the next time there's some kind of danger or something, give us the credit that we should get if we should help out. But I'm not sure if me or the rest of the guys will be helping out, but only Eguardo and Shorty might, since they had their memories erased. <laughs> Meanwhile, Melody and the other coaches had brought Boxer to the Furnace Kingdom. What do you coaches want from me? asked Boxer. Out of all the trucks you could have captured, why did it have to be me? But the coaches didn't respond. Instead, they stopped so quickly that Boxer leaned on his side and his hat with headphones fell out of his door. That, said one of the coaches, is why we captured you. What, my headphones? Yeah, we need them. You captured me and brought me all the way here just so you could take my headphones. We'll also to capture you and hold you prisoner so there's one less truck helping the heroes. The coaches took Boxer's headphones and then Melody shunted Boxer into a shed. I get to use the headphones next, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. I still think it's rather stupid that you mainly captured me just so you could take my headphones. Well, if you were a coach, you would understand. What do you mean? Well, Albert, our boss, doesn't give us a lot of time to listen to music. And during that little bit of time where we can listen to music, we have to like share my headphones, but since we only have one pair of headphones, not all of us coaches get to listen to music during the short bit of time. I see, said Boxer. Yes, said Moody. You're so lucky to listen to music so much, and we hardly have any time to listen to music. 
because Alva gives us, or at least tries to give us a lot of work to do. Well, well, what, Sit Melody? Well, us heroes can get a lot of free time to listen to music because we're nice to others and stuff. So, you know, if you were to ever help us, then we could give you a lot of free time for music. No. Alright, fine. Do you like that? Huh? Who's that? Boxer, is that you? What? Who is that? It's me, Ricky. And me, Roxanne. Ricky, Roxanne, are you guys in that other shed? Yes, it's us, and we've been trapped here for quite a while now. Boy, are we glad to see you. Only, you're trapped with us. Well, hopefully someone will come to rescue us, said Boxer. I sure hope so, said Ricky. Me too, said Roxanne. Hey, quiet, shouted Melody. I may have headphones on, but I can still hear you. It was nighttime by the time Stefano returned to the docks. At the docks, Salty and Porter were still shunting. Okay, Porter, said Salty. I'm going to refill on oil over there. While I'm doing that, can you take those two flatbeds of pipes and move them over to my track? Donald and Douglas will be coming in to the dock soon with a stone train, and those flatbeds mustn't be in the way. Sure thing, Salty, said Porter. So while Salty rolled over to the oil depot, Porter hopped over to the flatbeds and began to reverse with them. But then there was trouble. The points were still set against Porter since Salty had gone over to the oil depot. Porter was reversing too quickly to see them and he accidentally derailed. Oh no, cried Porter. To make matters worse, the front wheels of the first flatbed were still on the points that Donald and Douglas were going to be coming over. Stop! cried Donald. But it was too late. Ah! cried Donald as he and Douglas slid off the rails. And their late night stone train crashed into a heap. Goods were everywhere, but it wasn't over yet. The accident distracted Stefano, and he couldn't stop himself in time. Salty tried to reverse, but he accidentally went forward instead, and he broke through the buffers and nearly fell into the sea. But luckily, he landed on a small barge docked off to the side. And with a loud crash, Stefano missed the front of the ferry dock and accidentally crashed into the side of it. And he beached himself onto the dock side. He hit the oil depot so hard that some oil spilled onto the ground. And then some sparks from Stefano hitting the dock landed on the oil and set it on fire. Mamma mia, cried Stefano. He was stuck, and so were Crimson, Fiona, Scaredy, and Tara. Salty and Porter were stuck, Donald and Douglas were stuck, everyone at the docks was stuck, and the fire was starting to spread. Somebody call for help, cried Donald. There's no one here who can call for help, said Douglas. Or so he thought. The negatives were sleeping in a siding near the hose car and the water tanker. Just then, Timothy and Zero raced up. Wake up, you guys, said Timothy, and he blew his whistle. 
Well, what's going on? Said negative three. There's a fire at Brenham Docks, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to help fight it. Are you guys with me? Well, it's going to be hard for me to go back to sleep, so I guess we'll help. Said negative two. Excellent, said Timothy. He coupled Zero up to the hose car on the water tanker and began to hurry away quickly. But the hose on the hose car wasn't secure, and so it began to swing about as Timothy hurried down the line. The negatives quickly followed behind him. Back at Brenham Docks, the fire was still going. Tiffany had arrived and was horrified at what she saw. The fire was starting to burn at the side of Stefano. Ow, cried Stefano. A little help here? Crimson and Fiona were still stuck on top of Stefano. Hang on you two, said Tiffany. I'll get you down. And she lifted up Crimson and placed him on the tracks nearby. Then she flew over and lifted up Fiona. There we go, she said. You two should be safe right here. Thanks, Tiffany, said Crimson. But Scaredy and Tar are inside Stefano. Well, said Stefano, my back end can open up, but then they would slide right into the water. Just then, Bolstro pulled up. I can try and catch them, he said. So Bolstrode moved into a good enough position, Stefano opened his back door, and Tara and Scaredy slid out. But Bolstrode wasn't big enough to hold both of them. When he slid backwards, Scaredy fell off and landed in the water. Oh no, Scaredy, cried Tara. Suddenly a boat pulled up next to Scaredy and lowered his crane arm down towards him. Melvin, cried Tara. D Don't worry, said Bolstrode. He's with me. Melvin's on the good side now. He's rescuing Scaredy. See? And indeed he was. Hang on, Scaredy, said Melvin. I'll get you over to a safe spot. Bolstrode quickly followed Melvin. Yar, what about me, matey? cried Salty. I'm a little close to the fire, too. Just then, Captain came up, and he pushed Salty over towards the shore. Just then, Timothy, Zero, and the Negatives arrived at the docks, but then there was trouble. The hose car was still swinging, and it ended up hitting a stack of crates, and it fell over and slid onto the other line. Timothy came to a violent stop as Zero, the water tanker, and the hose car came off the tracks. The negatives couldn't stop in time and they ended up crashing into the wreckage. And some of them came off the rails. Ouch, moaned the negatives. That hurt. Negative four was still on the tracks. He tried to pull negative two and negative three back on the rails, but they tipped over and they pulled him with them. But there was more trouble about to happen. The stack of crates that Timothy had hit was wobbling dangerously and was beginning to tip. Timothy, back up, cried Negative One. You'll be trapped. Timothy backed up and Zero fell over. And then the crates fell over all over the track. Oh no, what have I done, cried Timothy. My friends are derailed and now they're trapped and so are the others. Oh, I wanted to help, but I ended up making things worse. But what am I going to do? What am I going to do? There was only one thing Timothy knew he could do. I got to get help, he said. And I know just who to go to for help. And he raced away quickly. Chloe, Joey, and Zoe had reached the Furnace Kingdom and were looking for Boxer. They were doing their best to avoid coaches. But it wasn't long before they found some.
Hey man, only coaches are allowed here. Oh, but we are coaches. Male coaches. Did Albert ever say anything about male coaches being allowed here? I thought he told you. Well, if you're not for sure, then why don't you go look for Albert and ask him? Okay then, I guess we'll do that. It wasn't long before Chloe, Joey, and Zoe reached the sheds where they could see Boxer from some of the windows. Three of the coaches were there and they were singing songs and listening to music. Mental wounds still screaming, driving me insane. I'm going off the rails on a crazy train. Then the male coaches pulled up. Excuse me, they said. Albert wanted you three to look for a brake van with a cracked wheel in shunting yard 13. I've never heard of such a shunting yard here in the kingdom. Then again, I've only worked here for two weeks, or was it two days? Albert told us to stand guard here, said Melody. Goodness, you don't want him to call you three useless for not doing what he asked you to do, said Chloe. Hurry along now, shunting yard 13. Is there some confusion, friend? I, uh, actually uh, try to avoid the number 13. They say it's a bad luck. Well, it's certainly proving to be bad luck for you, Mamma Mia! Oh, uh, what's going on out there? Okay, Boxer, you're free. Chloe, Joey, Zoe, you guys can rescue me. Yes, and we can't rescue your friends here too. Awesome, said Ricky. Now let's get out of here, said Roxanne. And all six quickly sped away. Ow, stupid brake van just sitting on the points. <sighs> what? Timothy? What are you doing here? You better get out of here before I wake everyone up. No, Stella, please. I need your help. Why do you need my help? Because you're one of the smartest trucks I know, and you're the only one I know who can really help me out with this problem. <sighs> what is it? Well, I should probably start by saying that I've been thinking for the longest time about something you said to me a while ago. And what's that? Well, you didn't actually say it to me, but you said it, it about me. That there's still some good in me. When did I... Oh, oh yeah, I remember. I was telling Paxton the story of your past along with Zero and the Negatives. And I said to him at the end that I was sure there was still some good in you. You... You're saying that there is? Yes, because I was trying to do something nice, but I messed it up, and now there's more trouble than there already was. 
What were you trying to do that you messed up? At there's a fire at Brenham Docks. Me, Zero, and the Negatives were bringing the host cart, but I accidentally derailed it, and now Zero and the Negatives are trapped, along with several engines and trucks. Some of those trucks are your father and brother. What? Oh no! Yes, oh no is right. We need fire engines and cranes to lift everything that's blocking the way. Okay, well, I can take care of that. I'll get some help as quick as I can. You start heading to the docks. And Timothy and Zella raced away quickly. Oi, it's starting to get warm around here, said Douglas. Just then, whistles could be heard, and Zella and Timothy hurried into the docks with Harvey and his brother Huey. Harvey and Huey quickly cleared away the crates and put Zero and the Negus back on the tracks in record time. Once they were back on the tracks, the Negatives used the host card to fight the fire. It's gonna take more than that to put out that fire, said Tara. Don't worry, said Timothy. There's more help on the way. And he was right. Belle, Flynn, and the fire crew raced into the docks from the other side. And they quickly set to work fighting the fire. It was taking a lot of effort to put out this fire, and soon the negatives as well as Timothy had to use water from their tanks to help the hose car when the water tanker ran out of water. At last, the fire was finally extinguished. The dock side was a pretty big mess. With engines derailed, goods shattered everywhere, trucks and other things burned and broken but everyone was safe there was no serious damage done to the engines or the trucks but Stevano's front end was badly damaged from the fire don't worry Stevano said Crimson and Fiona we've still got Todd's repairing water inside us we can use that to fix you. So the negatives pushed the hose car up to Crimson and Fiona. The hose car took some water and sprayed it at Stefano. And soon his damage was repaired in the blink of an eye. Once Huey and I can get all the engines and trucks back on the rails, we can use that water to repair any more damage done to the engines and rolling stocks at Harvey. You know what you are, Timothy? Axella. You're a hero. And so is Zero and the Negatives. And then, to everyone's surprise, within the blink of an eye, Timothy, Zero, and the Negatives had changed into some different colors. Hey, what's all this? said Melvin. These are Timothy, Zero, and the Negative's original colors, said Huey, for proving that they still have some good in them. They pretty much changed back to their normal colors, said Zella. Everyone was very happy, and so were Timothy, Zero, and the Negatives. It was good to be good again. While everyone was celebrating at the docks, the trucks from Wars were doing a late night search for Aguardo and Shorty. As they approached the junction, they soon spotted the two trucks in the distance. There they are, shouted Morgan. Hey you two, stop! But Aguardo and Shorty were too far away to hear. The points were switched to the wrong line, so they couldn't go after them. The fossil boxcar decided to go up the bridge. 
Wait a minute, what are you doing, stupid? said Lydia. That bridge is for narrow gauge engines only. What are you talking about? It's dual gauge track. I can go up the bridge too. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean. Ugh. What the fossil boxcar didn't know was that although the bridge was dual gauge track, it wasn't strong enough to hold standard gauge engines and rolling stock. And as the fossil boxcar rounded the bend, the bridge began to wobble and then it tipped. Whoa! When the dust cleared, the bridge was completely gone. The fossil box car had fallen to the tracks below and was buried beneath all the rubble. And Egg, Waddle, and Shorty had already disappeared. Stupid truck, said Lydia. I tried to warn him, but he wouldn't listen. That's the thing about stupid people, they don't listen. Yeah. So what are we gonna do now? I say we just leave him. He's been stupid one too many times. If he's not gonna do things right, listen to us, or any of that, then we should just leave him like that. Okay, if you say so. So long. Stupid! <laughs> They're probably right. I am just a big stupid truck and nothing else. Frankie was with some of the good trucks at a turntable. Just then, Ha Ha noticed something. Ha Ha Ha, look guys, it's Ricky and Roxanne. And sure enough, Roxanne and Ricky puffed up to the turntable, along with Boxer, Joey, Chloe, and Zoe. Ricky, Roxanne, said Danielle. There you guys are. We noticed you've been missing for a while now, and we were worried you might have been captured. We were captured, said Roxanne, and we were being held prisoner for quite some time. Boxer was soon captured and placed in the shed next to us, but then these three sweet little male fans came to our rescue. Well done, you three, said Frankie. We'll need all the help we can get following these other threats, like the Furnace Kingdom and worse than all that. Hey Boxer, said Wallace, why were you captured? Oh, said Boxer, the coaches wanted to take my headphones. They took your headphones? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Alright, Andy, buddy, I want you to... Just then, Melody and her friend rolled onto the turntable. Albert, they said. What, said Albert, I'm kind of busy here. We searched Shunting Yard 13, but there were no brake vans with cracked wheels there. In fact, there were no brake vans at all. What? What are you talking about? You asked us to go search Shunting Yard 13 for a brake van with a cracked wheel. I said no such thing. Who told you this? Three male coaches. Three male coaches. Which ones were they? Um, when I say male, I mean male as in M A I L. What? Henrietta, tell me, do we have any brake vans here? Sorry, wrong coach. Um, Ada, Jane, Mabel. Do we have any brake vans here? Nope, not a single one. Only rolling stock here in the Furnace Kingdom is us coaches. And one eyed David and his gang. Just then, Annie and Clarabel rushed up. Albert, they said, we just went by the prisoner sheds and they've been opened, and Bebe was derailed over there. 
it would seem, said Tasha, that these male coaches played a trick on you, Melody. Huh, I guess they did, said Melody. Well, it's a pretty clever one at that. My headphones. Let that serve as a reminder of what will happen to those who upset me. Wow. Just wow. That's pretty harsh. But he is pretty serious about doing that to people who will upset him. I don't want to upset him. Yes, none of you will want to upset me. Now get back to work. Ow, 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 hey! So, Gorgeous Green, how was your trip to India? Oh, uh, it, um, it went well. Yeah, except for the part where she let the good trucks get away with Crimson and Fiona. Yeah, she let two of Freedom's trucks talk her into showing them where they were. Guys. Anything else we should probably know about? Well, we were passing by the docks on our way back here, and we saw that Timothy, Zero, and the Negatives had turned good. And you think we're gonna be happy about that? Well, uh, not really. Bad news, Mickey. We weren't able to catch Eggwater and Shorty. We almost would have caught them, but that stupid red and yellow boxcar went on an unsafe bridge and it collapsed and blocked our tracks. So we decided to just leave him. Leave him where he was. We have no more use for him, I'm sure. First of all, yes, we will have no more use for that stupid boxcar. Second of all, we must stop Zella from bringing more bad guys to the good side. I know we had said that we were going to get rid of Zella one time not too long ago, but we still haven't done it yet. It's time we forget about the search for Eggwater and Shorty and focus on getting rid of Zella. So, time, alert the others, we attack at dawn. You got it, Mickey. <laughs> Alright, Crimson, splash him with the water. Ugh, ugh, wh what? There we go, that fixed his damage quite quickly, and it looks like it woke him up too. Huh? What? Where am I? You're outside the steamworks. Sorry about the water, but it was gonna be quicker to repair you than having Victor and Kevin do it. No offense, guys. No, no, it's fine. I'm glad that Todd's inventions are being put to good use. How did I get here? Well, Tiffany spotted you in the rubble of that broken bridge, and she told me, said Zella, so we came to rescue you. You came to rescue me? But why? Was it so you could try to get me to go to the good side? Well, yes, but also because we had to clear the line for the trains in the morning. Now? Why don't you tell me why you joined 
worse? Was there something that was upsetting you? Well, I joined worse because everyone was always calling me stupid. I joined Wars to get my revenge on them and prove I wasn't stupid, but I guess they're right. I am just a big stupid boxcar. Hey now, you're not stupid. You may not have the best idea sometimes and you may not think clearly all the time, but that doesn't mean you're a complete idiot. really think I'm not a complete idiot? I don't think. I know. By the way, do you have a name? No, I never had one. I worked in a fossil site for a short while, but then I got buried in a landslide, and it was quite some time before Aguada rescued me. And it was after that that I decided to join Wars. And basically, getting back to the subject of the name, I never had the chance to be given a name. Well, I'd be happy to give you one. Would you like the name Rufus? Rufus. Not bad. I rather do like it. Well, if you like it, then that's your name, then. Gee, having an actual name makes me pretty happy. And well, I can't assume this will happen, but I feel like if I'm actually happy, then maybe I won't be as stupid as I was when I was a bad truck. Well, if you stick with us, and. Help us battle against wars and the Furnace Kingdom and freedom and our trucks. And maybe you can prove you're not a stupid truck and that you were meant to be on the good side. Alright then, I think I'll stick around with you guys for a while. Um, what's your name again? Are you Zella? Yes, that's me. Well, thank you, Zella for everything, for rescuing me, for giving me a name, and for seeing the good in me. Oh, I never said I could see the good in you, but that doesn't mean I don't. I can see the good in a lot of trucks and engines and pretty much everyone. Zella and the others were a little too tired to go back to their sightings and sheds. So they slept in the steam works for the rest of the night and into the morning. That morning, the worst trucks gathered near Zella's gang, getting ready to attack them. Hold on, aren't we forgetting someone? Not Eduardo, not Shorty, what's his name? Cricket. Where's Cricket? I don't see him. Uh, Blue Eyes is right. Cricket's not with us. No time to look for him. We need to get rid of Zella now. Mickey's right. It is time to put an end to Zella's plans. Right you are, time. Let's go. Over by the turntables, Zella's gang of trucks was idling. Some of them were struggling to wake up, as they were still pretty tired, even after getting a good night's sleep. Ugh. Mm. Well, I don't know what we're going to do today, but I guess we'll find out when Zella gets back. Hey, there's a bunch of trucks coming. Hold on, is that Emma coming towards me? Good tag. Ah! Hey! Oh! Ah! We're under attack, said Komodo. Fight back, trucks. Fight back! Whoa! Whoa!
you. Where is Zella? Zella? You won't find her here. She went out to help one of your fellow trucks. Yeah, a truck you left behind when he fell off a broken bridge. Not the smartest move any of you ever made. Ah! Uh, oh, oh, ow! Oh, look out! Oh, oh, Morgan! Uh-oh, we're blocked. Rubbish, we can make it through. We just gotta push really hard. No, 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 stop! Hey, hey! Way to go, you dummy! Wow, you guys just lost a lot of your trucks over there. I guess victory will be ours. It's never too late for us to claim victory. Take that. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Bobby. Whoa. All right, no more Mr. Nice Truck. I'll show you what I'm really made of. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, nice one, Bobby. Now if I can just get Komodo there. We're back on the rails. Thanks, Bobby. Right, that takes care of Pluto. Your turn. Get away from him. Now, spin the turntable. Whoa. Oh. Okay, I think you've been standing on me for long enough. It's my turn now. Haha, -ha, we're winning. Don't underestimate the power of trucks from worst. Oh. Uh oh. Now it's your turn, Bob. Whoa, 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 whoa. Haha. -ha. Way to drool on the tracks and make him fall over, drool fool. Why, thank you, Angus. I'm definitely living up to my name. Uh-oh. Heads up, guys. Here comes more trouble. I'll get him. Missed. Scaredy and Tara to the rescue. What? Scaredy and Tara? Janelle! Your time is up, Bobby! Oh! 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 Get off me. Ow. Ah, enough. There's too many of them. Well, not too many, but they're too powerful. Let's get out of here. Aw, but I didn't get a chance to fight yet. Let's go, Paul. And all the worst trucks w raced away as fast as they could. <laughs> you won't be so lucky next time. But as the three leaders of war sped away, it happened. Ah! Something knocked the three trucks off the bridge and they sank into the ocean water below. But none of Zella's trucks nor Scaredy and Tara had seen the unidentified rolling stock knock Mickey, Mark, and their brother off the bridge. Are you guys okay? asked Scaredy. 
Well, some of us are a bit sour, but we'll recover. Don't you mean sore? Oh, sore, right, my mistake. Thanks for coming to our rescue, guys. Just then, Zella returned. Morning, everyone, she said. Meet the newest members of the gang. Zero and Rufus. Nice to meet you guys, said Komodo. Welcome to the gang. Oh, thanks. We're happy to be here. By the way, what just happened here? You all look pretty tired, like exhausted or something. Well, they were... We were just having our morning exercise. Morning exercise, huh? Yeah, we were finding the trucks from worst. Ah, uh, I see. And I'm guessing that Scaredy and Tara came to the rescue. Oh well, yeah, but what made you guess that? Well, why else would they be here? Well, yeah, you do have a point there. Yes, they came to the rescue. We would have gotten rid of all of Zella's gang if Scaredy and Tara hadn't shown up. How could these two extra trucks stop us? We had them outnumbered, even though some of us were derailed. Ugh, it's because Scaredy and Tara are some of the most experienced, toughest, bravest trucks around. Yeah, they're trouble. Hey. Where's Mickey, Mark, and the third one? All good trucks are nothing but trouble. We need to get rid of them all. Yeah, especially that Scaredy and his mother. Oh, yes. Especially that Scaredy and his mother. No one wants to get rid of those two more than me. Who are you? I'm Freedom, your new leader. All of the trucks from Worst waited anxiously for their new leader to arrive. We're wasting time just sitting here. Shut it, Green Tarp. My name is Time. We don't care. Just then, Freedom rolled up. Good evening, everyone, she said. I am your new leader. And so the question you may all be wondering right now is, how did I get back from train heaven when it exploded? Um, that's not really the question we had in mind, but yes, we would like to know the answer to that. Well, I'll tell you, said Freedom. A few weeks ago, my remaining trucks of the gang that were still living over there decided they were going to steal some old blueprints from one of my old friends, Todd. One of these blueprints was for a time-traveling breakdown crane. A time-traveling breakdown crane? Yes, a time-traveling breakdown crane. They did some modifications to this version so that the crane could take them to a certain place they wanted to be at a certain time. So they made the time traveling crane take them into train heaven to the point where train heaven was almost about to explode with all the dynamite we had put around it. They were able to rescue me along with Inchworm and Ryan and my parents. But the other trucks that were in my gang, as well as those two engines, Alfred and Crovin, weren't able to be rescued in time. The trucks brought me, my parents, and Inchworm and Ryan back to the living world. And I was in hiding for a while, until recently. And now that I'm back, let me guess, you want to destroy all truck leaders, so you can lead every single truck in the world and have them all be troublesome? Oh yes, but it's more than just trucks this time. 
What do you mean, more than just trucks? This time, I plan to not only lead all trucks, but all of the rolling stock, including Albert's coaches, and not just all rolling stock like trucks and coaches, as well as brake vans and any breakdown cranes, etc. But this time, I plan to lead all engines to... Whoa, really? All rolling stock and engines? She's gonna make all of them work for her? That's what I want to do, and it's what I will do. The trucks murmured to each other. No one noticed that Tipper, Tubble, and Tumble were hiding under the bridge and were listening in on the whole conversation. We gotta go now, before we get caught. And they raced away as fast as they could. Thankfully, none of the trucks saw them. Freedom said, what? She's gonna be in charge of all rolling stock and engines this time. This is crazy. Freedom's gone mad, I tell you. Yes, my thoughts exactly, Todd. We're gonna have to attack Freedom now before she has the chance to get a bigger army. Hold on now, Mom. I know we need to stop Freedom, but we can't rush ourselves to do it. We're gonna need time to come up with a plan or something. But Tara wouldn't have it. The longer we wait, the stronger Freedom gets, she said. We need to get rid of her now. Now hold on, Mom. I'm the leader of this gang, so I decide what we do and what we don't do. You may be leader of this gang, but I'm your mom, so I'm in charge of you. So, I say we attack Freedom now while we've got the chance. Scaredy was hesitant, but reluctantly agreed. Alright, he sighed. Come on, everyone. Let's go find Freedom and take her down. And Scaredy and his truck set off, feeling rather nervous about the upcoming battle they were about to fight in. It wasn't long before Scaredy and his gang came across Freedom and her gang. Alright, uh, Scaredy's gang, attack! I don't know about this. Me neither. Yeah, I don't think this is a good idea. Let's get him. Yikes. Back away, back away. Hey! Ow! Haha, -ha, we got one of them. Yes, we did. Wait, 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 stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, take that. Inchworm, when that cranberry car gets up here, topple him off the edge. But unfortunately, Tex had coupled up to Reese. So when Inchworm tried to hit them, the two trucks were too heavy for him to push, and he ended up being shoved backwards. And he crashed into Jesse and Bossy. Uh-oh. Messy, take care of them. Oh! Yeah, whoa! Oh. Okay, my turn. Come on. Yeah, whoa!
Coming through. Sorry about that. Oh. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Gotcha. Gertie was about to back up to help his mother fight freedom, but then... Ha 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 Security went racing into a signing and suddenly found himself dangling off the edge of a cliff. Oh no, cried Security. Meanwhile, Rotten and Todd had come to join the battle. Meanwhile, Scaredy was in danger of sliding off the edge of the cliff. Mom, he cried, I need some help over here. But his mom was too busy fighting freedom. Be right there, give me a minute. Mom, I can't hold on much. Scaredy, no! Ah! Freedom bumped Tara so hard that she ran backwards and she tumbled off the edge too. Crimson and Fiona then arrived. They had just seen Scaredy and Tara fall off the cliff. Oh no! Scaredy! Tara! Oswald! cried Freedom. Get those tangers and bring them to me. Sure thing, Freedom. Come here, kids. Ah! Oswald chased Crimson and Fiona down the line. The two kids raced through a junction that went past a busy yard. I got you now. Leave those tangers alone, Oswald. Oswald gasped. Yeah. There were Aguardo and Shorty, along with some of the international trucks, and a whole bunch of engines. Oh, uh, I just remembered something back at the lair. I gotta go. Come on, everyone, said Aguardo. Let's chase him and the other bad trucks away. And everyone rushed off. Crimson and Fiona watched as the huge line of international allies chased after Oswald. Aguardo and his allies soon caught up with Freedom and her gang, and with the combined forces of them and Scaredy's trucks, the bad trucks were forced to retreat. Freedom was very cross. Don't worry, Freedom, said Redneck. Some of us went down the hill to collect Scaredy and Tara. They're still alive, but they won't be for long. We took them somewhere to be held prisoner for a while until we can figure out what to do to get rid of them. Excellent, said Freedom. Once I get rid of Scaredy and Tara, Scaredy's trucks will have no other choice but to come work for me, and I'll be closer to getting all trucks and other own stock as well as engines to work for me. None of Aguardo's allies had been around to hear Freedom say this. However, Ellie, the silver streamlined engine, had been hiding in a tunnel and had heard everything Freedom had said. She knew she had to tell her friends, so she raced away quickly. In the Kingdom of Sodor, Thomas was having a meeting with several engines. And so, on the question as to whether we need to defeat worst 
Freedom's Gang or the Furnace Kingdom first. We've pretty much come to the decision that Thomas. Thomas. I'm sorry to interrupt. Ah, uh, hello, Ellie. Long time no see. Ellie? Oh, hello. Motion to allow Ellie to join in the meeting we're kind of in the middle of. I, 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 nay, nay, what do you mean nay? That's not very nice. The eyes have it. Ellie, you may join in to the meeting. Oh, uh, uh, hello there. Did I say hello already? <laughs> Silver saying stuff he already said. And he's saying it nervously. You think what I'm thinking, Philip? Oh, I think I am. Hush, you too. Now then, Ellie, I take it you had some important news to deliver? Indeed I do, said Ellie. I've got good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is that I was watching a battle going on and it seems that Ake Wardo and Shorty have rallied up a gang of the international trucks and several international engines to help fight off the bad trucks, said Ellie. Ah, Eggwater and Shorty. Seems like they're still on the good side now, since that fossil boxcar erased their memories of worst. So what's the bad news? Yeah, what is it, even though I wouldn't like to know? Well, the bad news is that I discovered that, one, Scaredy and Tara have been captured by Freedom's gang, which includes her trucks, as well as the trucks from Worst. And second of all, Freedom plans to take control of all trucks and other rolling stock, as well as all the engines this time. What? Oh no, that's insane, that's terrible. Goodness gracious, said Timothy. I worked with Freedom when I was in Train Heaven, and I knew she was a pretty mad villain with some crazy evil plans, but I never thought she'd go so far as to do a plan as evil as this. Yeah, said Negative 2. This is insane. Crazy. Why, it's... it's... Disgraceful, said Gordon. Disgusting, said James. Despicable, finished Henry. Well, when I find that freedom, I'm gonna bash her above her so hard they get stuck up her nose, said Donald crossly. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny? Uh, uh, well, well I do too. Ha 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 ha. Well, what should we do then? asked Dodge. I think Thomas will know, said Splatter. Yes, said Thomas. With the news of what Freedom plans to do this time, I think it's quite clear that our objective is to get rid of her first, and then we can worry about the other threats. And so, we're gonna need to make a plan, so this is what we're probably gonna have to try to do. Can we go now? I'm bored. Yeah, me too. Shh, quiet. I'm trying to listen in, and it sounds like Freedom has bigger plans this time. She wants to take control of all rolling stock and engines too. Oh my, well that's not good. No it isn't. It may not be good, but it's also good at the same time. This is my chance. Your chance? Your chance for what? If I can get rid of Freedom, who's considered to be the biggest threat right now, then this is a chance for me to get all the credit and praise that I deserve. Praise and credit? What are you talking about? Come on, Becky, you know what I'm talking about. This is the whole reason why I turned evil. The Furnace Kingdom wasn't getting enough praise and credit. Sodor was hawking the spotlight. If I can get rid of Freedom and her gang, then the Furnace Kingdom will take the spotlight for a long time. And why would it get the spotlight? 
Because freedom's considered to be the biggest threat right now. Duh. Okay, okay, don't give me that attitude. Alright, come on everyone. Let's get the army rounded up and then we'll go find freedom and take her down. Ugh. Oh, my head. Huh? Where am I? Scaredy looked around. He and his mom were trapped in some sightings. And the sling bridge in front of them was open. And it was facing the wrong way. So there was no way they could push the track down in order to get out. Oh, botheration, said Tara. We're stuck. And they were. Scaredy was very cross. Way to get us into this, Mom, he said. I was in danger back there at the cliff, and you wouldn't stop to help your son. And because of that, you got us both captured. Tara knew her son was right. She felt terrible. Scaredy, I'm... You're right, Scaredy. This is my fault. I should have known better than to try to attack Freedom when she had more trucks and we had little time to make a plan. Scaredy said nothing. I shouldn't have been so focused on defeating Freedom. I should have made rescuing you my top priority. It's just, after you defeated Freedom, you became such a legendary, popular, famous hero. I just wanted the chance to defeat Freedom so I could get all that fame and popularity. I just want to be a hero. Mom. You've always been a hero. I have? Yes. You've helped me and my friends out on many occasions. You helped us when we were escaping train heaven. You helped us during the Superstation Showdown. You've helped plenty of times, and that's made you a hero several times. And you've been a hero even when you haven't been helping to fight bad guys. You've always been looking out for me and my siblings. And you helped take care of everyone. You've been a hero ever since you were built. Huh. I guess I have been a hero ever since I was built. I just never took the time to realize it. Now let's find a way out of here and defeat freedom. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try something. It may not work and it may get me hurt but I'm going to try it. Okay. Okay, here goes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Yes, nice work, Mom. You did it. I did do it. That went better than I thought it would. Come on. Let's go defeat Freedom together and Scaredy and Tara raced away down the line in an area between the Sodor and the Furnace Kingdoms Albert was talking to his gang members listen up everyone to Albert our time has finally come 
meaning the time has come to destroy the Sword Art Kingdom once and for all. Uh, no. We're going to destroy Freedom and her gang first. Freedom is a huge threat right now, so if we can destroy her, then I can get all the praise and credit that I deserve. And then will we destroy the Sword Art Kingdom? Yeah, will we? Some of us still have a score to settle with some of the engines and trucks that live there. We'll see what happens after we destroy Freedom. If Sodor doesn't give me any praise and credit, then we'll destroy them for sure. Now listen up everyone, this is what we're going to do. But before Albert could start explaining his plan, one of his coaches was suddenly attacked. Oh! Ah! The coach knocked Brutal Bonnie and One-Eyed David off the tracks. Hello, Albert. Freedom. I might have known you would try to show up. Engines and coaches, he shouted. Attack! Are you sure about this, Albert? Sure, I'm sure. Now get down there and fight. But I have very little experience at fighting, and I said get down there and fight. Oh, I don't know about this. Get him, trucks. You better back off. I don't want to have to hurt you. Oh, but we want to hurt you. Take that. Oh. Oh no, Marcus. Ah. Whoa. Oh, oops. Ow. You trucks will pay for that. But the coach was going a little too fast. He caught up to the blue engine and smashed into it so hard that they flew off the tracks. I'll take care of Albert. You three, take care of those two blue coaches. Oh no, it's three empty trucks against two coaches. Yeah, but they're empty trucks, so they should be easy to take out. But Victoria was wrong. Oh! I'm down. You trucks, you broke all my windows. There were trucks on the other side of the yard as well. Get him, Becky, said Otto. Show them what furnace kingdom engines are made of. Ah! Oh! Ha 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 ha! You will pay for that. Urgh. Although he struggled immensely, Otto was unable to overpower the trucks. And they pushed him off the rails. Hey! Our turn, in Intrum's voice. Oh boy, oh boy, it's our turn. Yeah. Come on, Melody, you can do better than that. Yeah, do it like this. Yeehaw! Oh! Well, try not to come off the rails when you attack. And you don't have to say yee-haw either. Okay, let me try, said the spare parts car. But as he was backing up, power came racing out of the tunnel. While this was happening, Freedom raced up the hill to where Albert was sitting. 
you think you have the power to defeat me, you're wrong. Oh yeah? We'll see about that. Albert backed up a bit to get a running start at freedom. But then there was trouble. Ah! Oh! The bridge support broke, and the track beneath Albert suddenly collapsed. Albert's back end was lifted off the track. Whoa, whoa, he cried. Ow! Oh no, I'm in trouble. Whoa, no, don't you dare. No! Ah! And Albert fell to the ground with a loud crash. He somehow managed to survive the high fall. But before he could say anything, Freedom spoke up. Albert, King of the Furnace Kingdom, is dead. I am your new leader. That goes for you trucks, engines, and coaches. Alright, fine, whatever. That's cool, yeah? Sure, whatever you say, new leader. What? Why, you dirty, no good, double crossing? Whoa, oh no, oh no. The boulder that sat on the ledge above Albert was in danger of falling off. Any loud noises, and it would slip off and land on Albert, and then he would be dead. Freedom and all of her gang members, old and new, hurried away quickly. Soon everyone had left. Albert was all alone, but not for long. In the distance, he could see something approaching, but he couldn't hear any noise. Then he realized who it was. It was Stafford, and he had Cricket with him. Ever so quietly, Stafford and Cricket backed up to Albert, and they managed to couple up to him. Then they carefully pulled him over the buffers and back onto the tracks. They then raced away just in time. Back in the Sodor Kingdom, Thomas and several of the engines were talking to Eggwardo and Shorty. So, said Thomas, after that fossil box car, Rufus, yes, Rufus, after Rufus erased your memories a month's worth, were you two collecting international allies this whole time? Yes, yes we were, said Eguardo. We normally would have been going to wars like we did before, but when we heard that Freedom was back, we knew we needed to help defeat her. Yes indeed, said Eguardo. That Freedom is one of the greatest threats to ever be known, and we wouldn't want her causing more trouble again. So we started collecting allies around the world, so that they could help us in the battle. Well, we're thankful for that, said Thomas. We're thankful that you didn't go back to wars and join them. We're thankful you guys have been helping us. Just then, Roxanne noticed something coming through the tunnel. Someone's coming, guys, she said. And out of the tunnel came Stafford, Cricket, and Albert. Stafford, said Dodge, what are you doing with Cricket and Albert? Stafford explained about how he had managed to capture Cricket using his silent battery to sneak up on him. Wow, said Philip, I guess we were kind of wrong to doubt his abilities. Yes, I guess we were wrong, said Scruff. Stafford then explained how Cricket had told him why Eguardo's gang had joined worse, and then he explained how he and Cricket had saved Albert. 
I see, said Casey Jr. Well, I think we better have a word with Albert. Thomas reversed onto the turntable and faced Albert. Scruff and Zella went around and went behind Albert to make sure he wouldn't try to escape. Well, Albert, it seems like freedom has taken over your entire gang. What have you got to say for yourself? Albert was very, very sad. It's not like it was his fault that Freedom took over his gang, said Cricket. I'm pretty sure it wasn't his fault. I'm referring to everything else he's been trying to do to us lately, said Thomas. Albert finally managed to get some words out of his mouth. I... I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I've been such a... Big stupid fool this whole time. Indeed you have, said Thomas. You've been setting a bad example for kingdoms everywhere. It's just... I was jealous, said Albert. I was so jealous of all the attention you guys were getting and how your kingdom was becoming so famous after you were defeating all those threats. Like... From the very start, it was Timothy and the negatives, and then you just kept defeating more and more threats, and after you defeated Boulder and all the Superstation villains, I just couldn't take it anymore. I just wanted fame, credit, praise, popularity, all that stuff, said Albert. The engines all shot nasty looks at Albert. Then Eduardo spoke up. Me and Shorty turned evil kind of for the same reason, said Eduardo. We wanted credit for helping to fight a fire in the forest, but we didn't get any. But as we were collecting international allies, we took some time to realize that we can't be happy with what we want. We can only, like, be happy with what we're given. In other words, said Shorty, we can't be wanting everything that we could possibly want. If we wanted credit and we didn't get any, we may just have to deal with it sometimes. It does not mean we have the right to do evil things. Indeed, said Eduardo, while we may not have gotten credit and praise for fighting that fire, we should still be thankful that we had friends and everything else. Yeah. Albert knew that Eduardo and Shorty were right. I'm so sorry once again, he said, but I wouldn't expect you guys to forgive me that easily. Oh, but we do, said Ariana. You do? You do forgive me? said Albert. Of course we do, said Ricky. That's what friends are for, isn't it? Albert smiled. It was his first not evil, actually happy smile he had ever had in a long time. Thank you so much, guys, he said, and I promise I will help you all defeat freedom. I may not have any coaches, engines, or trucks with me anymore, but I'll still help you out as best I can. The engines all smiled and tooted their whistles happily. I love it when someone's been forgiven. Even if they've done a lot of bad things in the past, said Ellie. Same here, said Silver. But that's not the only thing I love. Uh, okay, Thomas, should we tell Albert our plan? Said Casey. 
Ah uh, yes, the plan, said so, Thomas. Alright, Albert. This is our plan to stop freedom, and here's how you can help. The next morning, Thomas and several engines and trucks were lined up on the tracks. Tiffany had managed to track Freedom's gang down to an old yard, and Thomas and the trucks and the engines were getting ready to attack it from one side, while several other engines and trucks were going to attack it from the other side. Tiffany flew over Thomas. Albert is leading the other half of the army towards the yards, she said. You guys better get going if we want to attack at the same time. Right then, said Thomas, let's go everyone. And all of the engines and the trucks hurried away down the track. They soon arrived at the yard where Albert's half of the gang was already attacking. Let's end this, cried Thomas. Ah! Whoa! Oh! You wouldn't dare attack me. You would feel sorry for me. You would wish you hadn't done it. You would regret it. Oh no, I wouldn't. After all, there's no use crying over spilled milk. Oh, oh. On your cage, milk. Or however you say it in German. Let me tell you, Ellie, said Silver, I love fighting villains just as much as I love you and... Uh, what? Did you just say what I thought you said? Well, uh, uh... That's funny, cause you know, I feel the same way about you. Really? Really, really? Now come on, boyfriend. Let's give these bad guys what for. Woohoo! Come on, sidekick, said Thomas. Attack the coaches! Haha! -ha. Splatter, Dodge, and Thomas won. Coaches, zero. Or would it be three for us since we took out three coaches? Uh, we'll talk about this later. Come on. Just then, Paul came up and attacked Rotten. Rotten was knocked on his side, and Paul put his front wheels on top of him to prevent him from getting up. But Rotten's hat had flown away, but then suddenly it came flying back and hit Paul in the face. Ah! Yeah. Woohoo, yeah! Let's hear it for Todd's boomerang hat invention. Yeah. What was that? Oh, my boomerang hat? Yes, it's nice, isn't it? Ah! Ah! Oh! I think he broke my glasses. Alright, now you've got me all mad. Here I come. Important engine coming through. Oh no, wow! Oh. oh! Oh, that hurt. I'll bet it did, and I'll bet this will too. Ow, 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 ow. Oliver rolled up to take on Beppe. You think you stand a chance against an Italian coach like, uh, me? You think you're so a uh, tough? Well, think again. <laughs> Whoa, watch out. Oh! Careful, dummy. You almost derailed me. Whoa, whoa. 
Whoa, stop. Oh, there goes my milk barrel. The milk barrel landed on the track just as the double-decker coach started racing forward. Ow, he cried. Ha ha, laughed Oliver. Suddenly, Timothy noticed something. There were three trucks on the upper track that were going to charge down and hit Oliver's front wheels. Oliver, look out, he cried, and he pushed Oliver out of the way just in time. Ow. Oh. Ow. Oh. Oh, thank you, Timothy. That could have been nasty. My pleasure. You may be number zero, but right now you're being number one. Oh, stop. You're making me feel flattered. Gideon and Inchworm were very cross. At least I'm still on the rails. I'll try to get you back on the track, Gideon, he said. Not if I can help it, said Lay. He had snuck up behind the trucks and knocked the yellow truck off the track. A good brake van named Toad rode up to Buddy. Sorry to do this, Mr. Uh, Buddy. Right, Buddy. Ow! But a good break fan's gotta do what a good break fan's gotta do. Fight bad guys. Great work, Toad, said Harry. Let's keep it up, guys. Prepare to face the unescapable wrath of the Caledonian twins. And Donald bumped Wildfire so hard he flew off the tracks and landed in a cargo bin. Your turn, Ducky, said Donald. Why don't you take out this little blue lot? What? Are you talking about me? No, no, please, don't. Here it goes, said Douglas. And he rushed forward and gave Andy a big hard bump. What the? Oh! Yikes! Well, it can't get any worse than... This. Oh no, 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 no. Ah! Bossy had been sleeping in a nearby shed, and Andy screaming finally woke him up. What's going on out here? He cried. Some of us are trying to... Ugh! What the? We're under attack. Henrietta, sound the alarm. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Intruder alert, intruder alert, intruder... Ow! And Bossy came out the other end of his shed and derailed on the other side. Nice one, Donald. Oh, watch out. Thanks for that, Dougie. Freedom had heard Bossy shouting. What's going on here? She called. Her parents joined her at the edge of the upper tracks, and they saw what was going on down below. We're on our attack, said Father Torture. Oh dear, looks like we're already losing lots of our gang members, said an engine. You lot, get down there and stop them before we lose too many more members. Yes, we them right away. Wait, 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 the hero. You might damage your glasses trying to push Pepe aside. Allow me. No, 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 please, please, please. No, no, no. Ow! Thank you, Zero. Time and Hillbilly raced down the hill towards Gordon. But Gordon was first out of the way and so did Oliver and Timothy. And the two trucks slid off the bend. Oh great, how could this get any worse? Don't say that! I know I shouldn't say it, but I wanted to say it anyway. Well, for all we know, another engine could come down the line and hit us right now. I don't hear any engines coming. 
Of course you don't, because I'm electric. Ow! Then Paxton came along and knocked the rest of time off the track. Hey, Lay, think fast. Ah! Ow. Thank you, negatives, said Lay. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Ha ha ha, ah, oh! Ha ha ha, I scared you good. That's not funny, that's not funny. Let's get him, Victoria. Come on, Toby, said Henry. Let's get him. Oh. Ow, 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 ow. Whoa. Hey, now, that wasn't very nice. Yeah, that hurt, you know. Coming through, said Alfred. Ah. Yeah. Ow, ow, ow. Come on, kids. You know what to do. And Chloe, Joey, and Zoe raced down the other line and hit Bernie and Blue Ice. Gorgeous Green and her friends raced up onto the top bridge, only to be knocked off by... Eduardo, Shorty, and Cricket. But one of the tankers was leaning against the bridge support and was beginning to break it. Back up, cried Shorty, and the three trucks did, just in time. Three open coaches. Ada, Jane, and Mabel raced up the hill towards Ellie. Watch out, Ellie, cried Toby and Albert. Ellie saw the coaches coming and quickly ran off the track and knocked over a brutal Bonnie and one-eyed David. She landed safely on the rails while the coaches raced up onto the unsafe bridge. Oh no, no, no. And the bridge collapsed. Oh. There were still villains left to defeat, but there were still some heroes ready to help. Go ahead, Tasha. Hit me as hard as you can. Alright, I will... Whoa! Oh, ow! Whoa, cried Vinny. How on earth did that happen? Magnetic buffers, said Rufus. They have the opposite ends of magnets which push others away. Well, that's a pretty smart idea, said Stella. I agree, said Zero. Me too, shouted Vinny. Ha! You hear that, Miranda? They think it's a smart idea, not a stupid one. Mikey and Marty came down the hill, and they gave Scruffy a good hard bump. Luckily, Scruffy rolled safely across the tracks and onto the other line. Hey, that was my dad you just hit, said Bobby. Take this. And Mikey and Marty derailed on the bumps and plowed through Gideon in the yellow truck. Oh no, cried Marty. Oh no. And they each crashed into a bridge support. And Lydia and Morgan fell to the ground. That hurt, cried Morgan. Oh, sorry. Ow, cried Marty. Urgh. Get the stupid bridge off of my head, cried Mikey. Beth was on her way to the fight, only to find out that the bridge was out. The heroes quickly finished off the rest of the bad guys. Ha! 
How dare you? Ah! No, 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 stop! Ah! Haha! -ha. Bet you guys didn't see that coming. Good work, Jamie, said Scruffy. Now it's my turn. Urgh. Hey, hey. Ah, ah, ah. Come here, you, said Hong Mei. I just want to knock you off the rails. Moonlight raced onto the broken bridge. I can make it. I can make it, he cried. But he had forgotten that the bridge was curved and not straight. Ew, ow! Special paint delivery, said Ivan. Ow! You silly diesel, you got paint all over our windows. But Andy, all our windows were broken when we were derailed. Oh, right. You mean paint got inside of us? Ah, there's paint on my seat. Ah, no. You stupid galloping sausage. Look what you did. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh, no, no. Ah, ah. Oh. Ha ha. That takes care of that big blue loser. And last but not least, you. Oh, oh. Ah. We're losing. In fact, we already lost. At least they can't get us up here. That's what you think. Ah! Oh no. Ah! Oh no. No. Oh no. But Scaredy and Tara beat Freedom back to the junction. And then they pushed her down the track. And right off the edge. On her way down, Freedom hit a searchlight. And then she crashed to the ground, landing by her parents who had landed next to a pile of dynamite. The searchlight that Freedom had hit then tipped over. It was turned on and when it fell to the ground it broke. Sparks from the bulb flew and lit the fuses to the dynamite. And the fuses were extremely short. No, no, no! Everyone stopped. And looked. There was a big crater in the ground where the explosion had happened, and there was no sign of freedom or her parents. Scaredy and Tar smiled at each other. The heroes had won. The two tankers made their way down just as Proteus and Lady arrived. Look, there they are, shouted Clay. Scaredy and Tara, they're okay. They defeated Freedom and her parents, shouted Bobby. Jamie raced up. Whoa, watch out there, said Proteus. Well done, you two, said Jamie. Thank you, said Scaredy and Tara. Yeah, you did it, said Black Ligrish and Raven as they rolled up with Crimson, Fiona, and Slimy. Now then, said Albert, what are we to do with all of these villains? Um, if I may, said Zella. Why don't I talk to them? I think I can handle this, she said. Alright then, said Lady, if you think you can, then go ahead. Zella rolled into the center of the area. Attention all villains, she said. 
I know you all are upset that you've been derailed, damaged, you're dirty, tired, and freedom and appearance have been destroyed, and you've all been defeated, but please hear me out. I know that there's still some good left in all of you. There was good left in Albert. There was good left in Rufus over there. I know you all still have some good inside you. No one can possibly be bad from the very start. I know you all have been good from the start. Something down the line just made you all turn bad. But if you were all good from the start, then you can all still be good now, even after all your bad deeds. We can forgive you all for your past evil deeds if you go back to being good and never try to do anything bad again. Show that you were good from the start and you'll be good till the end. All of the villains realized that Zella was right. None of them, not a single one, had been bad from the very start. They had all started out good, but some time later, they had all been bothered by something that made them want to turn bad. They all knew that with freedom gone, they had a choice to go back to being good. And that's exactly what they did. Very well, said Victoria. We will no longer be evil, mean, rotten, bad, whatever. We will be good from here on out. You really will forgive us all for all the bad things we've done in the past? Of course we will. And it was from that point onwards that all of the coaches, Furnace Kingdom engines, and all the trucks turned good. Soon, the mess was cleaned up and everyone started living a happy life together. Amends had been made, all had been forgiven, and thanks were given to all of those who had helped. Stafford in particular got a special award due to everyone underestimating him at first. Wow, Stafford, that's a very nice medal. Yeah, you deserve it. You're the best electric engine in the kingdom. Guys, he's the only electric engine in the kingdom. Oh, right, yeah. The next day, Melody and several trucks went to the Furnace Kingdom to collect parts to repair the damaged Furnace Kingdom engines. Melody was still feeling upset that Albert had broken her headphones. Just then, Inchworm and Rufus rolled up. Hey, said Inchworm, I found these headphones on a hat sitting near a turntable. Does anyone know who they belong to? Oh, said Lena, those headphones belong to Melody. Say what now? Those are your headphones. Yes, but I'd like to give them to Melody, especially seeing that Albert broke hers. But you need your headphones and music to be happy. I know that's a fact about you, said Melody. Yes, it's true that I need music and my headphones to be happy, but you know what makes me more happy than music? Having friends. And it would make me very happy if you and I could be friends, Melody. Melody was silent. All the trucks looked at her. Thanks, Boxer. It's so kind of you. I'm glad I could make you happy friend. Yes, we're definitely going to be good friends indeed. <laughs>